Wow, what an election last night, huh? It was just incredible. And apparently there's still, uh, you know, this. I'm looking at the Des Moines Register here, and uh, this story was filed by Jennifer Jacobs in the Des Moines Register about 20 minutes ago. Uh, I'm sorry, about 16 minutes ago. And uh, here's what she says. Voters from one precinct in Iowa were still missing Tuesday morning, and Democrats from that neighborhood are scrambling to find party officials so that they could report their tally. Bernie Sanders won by two delegates. But the voters of Des Moines Precinct Number 42 couldn't find anyone at the Iowa Democratic Party to take their phone calls. The party's caucus hotline is no longer working. The party headquarters was locked. So, (laughs) so... Who knows what's going on? I mean, this is the Des Moines Register. This is not, you know, Glenn, Alex Jones, Glenn Beck stuff. Um, Meanwhile, Ari Rabenhoft is on the line with us. He's the host of Morning Agenda on Sirius XM. It runs from 6 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, on Sirius Progress, uh, Channel 127, channel that I'm on. He's also the co-author of the Benghazi hoax. He was formerly with Media Matters. And uh, the website is morningagenda.com. Ari, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tom. It's great to have you with us. First of all, do you know anything about this uh, precinct number 42 that has not been able to report their Bernie victory? I I read the same story in the Des Moines Register. Look, this relates to something that is an actual problem, and that is caucuses are not like primaries. They're not run by uh, the Secretary of State's office, right? They're run by the parties themselves, which, you know, look, democracy is great. But the state parties tend to be, across the country, Republican and Democrat, tend to be a lot of volunteers kind of struggling with a lot of stuff, right? And In the the case of this, in this particular precinct, apparently nobody was willing to run the thing, so some guy who just showed up to vote said, okay, I'll do it. His name was Joseph. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's, there were a number of precincts that went unstaffed last night. Look, I, I think the important thing, and I, I think this is, to me, if, if you're on the Sanders side in this primary, uh, in, in, the, in the primary election, to me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on this stuff, I would, because in the end, six delegates isn't going to matter at the Democratic National Convention. The fact is, it's 49.9% to 49.7%. Right. Like, the, that's a tie. The yeah. fact that he came in here and tied when nine months ago... I spoke to Jeff Weaver yesterday, and Jeff Weaver, as I said to you on my, your TV show, said if anybody had told me, if I said nine months ago that we were going to tie Hillary Clinton in Iowa, you would have sent me to the, to the insane asylum. Yeah. Or, or at least not taking you seriously. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Although, you know, there's a long history of people underestimating Bernie Sanders and, and, uh, and ending their political careers as a result of it. Um, so... So, you know, nat nat, and I'm and I don't want to play the, you know, did Hillary really win? Did Bernie really win? It looks like they both really won or they tied. And uh, uh you know, we'll see how it all shakes out eventually. I mean, keep in mind, in Iowa four years ago, they had uh they, they had declared one Republican the winner, um I forget who it was, but it turned out it was really Rick Sant oh, it was Mitt Romney. They declared Mitt him Romney, the winner. Rick Santorum and, was the real winner and it destroyed his campaign, frankly. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, wait, how did it destroy his campaign? Well, in Rick Santorum's case, because Rick Santorum lost any of the momentum that he would have gained from Iowa. Oh, by not being declared the winner. By not being, because he, it would have been shocking had Rick Santorum been declared the winner. By declaring Mitt Romney the winner early, it, it, it stifled any momentum that Rick Santorum hoped to get. Yeah, even though Santorum actually was the winner. Uh, which yep. is pretty strange. Here's a here's a little bit of trivia. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Um, uh, I, I saw it first on uh, Twitter from uh, at Starfers to Camila Donaldson uh, tweeting it, and and I clicked on the you know I checked the link, and it's true. Uh, there's a website called Loser.com. Oh yeah, now it's somebody switched the DNS entry, so it's supposed to Donald Trump. That's correct, and now and now redirects to the Wikipedia page on Trump. <laughs> So I mean, which is always which is always a good joke. At one point in time, I owned smelliestpersonintheworld.com, dot com, and I redirected it towards a friend of mine. <laughs> that's that's pretty nasty. <laughs> so so uh, if, if, first of all, are you going to get safely out of Iowa? You know, how's the snowstorm? What's going on with that? Uh, well, uh, me and somebody you know who I, I don't want to say his name on air are actually in a car. We we've gone south of the blizzard. We're somewhere in Kansas. We kind of 
decided to go for alternative travel plans and, and, made, and made plans to go to Kansas City. Uh-huh. So we are actually headed south on I-35 as I speak to you, uh, uh, heading towards Kansas City to catch a flight there. Because when I stepped outside in Iowa this morning, dear, dear God, it wasn't, it wasn't just the snow, the wind knocked me over. So that, yeah. that was not the safest place to fly out of. This yeah, it's a pretty severe storm. I, uh, I flew out of that storm in Los Angeles uh, Sunday, and, uh, and I thought, as this moves across the country, it's going to get, you know. So, so what, in your mind, we're talking with Ari Rabenhoff, host of The Agenda on Sirius XM and uh, uh, author of The Benghazi Hoax and one of America's most thoughtful and insightful political commentators. And it's always a pleasure talking with you, Ari. Um, Thank you, Tom. What's, uh, what is your take home on both the Democratic and the Republican? We haven't talked about the Republican side, but on both sides in the, in the couple minutes we've got left here. Just, you know, what in, in summary? Sure. On the Democratic side, look, Bernie Sanders, you know, just by performing the way he did, I, I think you cannot say he didn't win. And look, you got to give credit to Hillary Clinton in that she shook off the Iowa curse of eight years ago and, and did her did, did well. Right. right and didn't lose lose coming third again like she did eight years ago. Right. Uh, so shaking off the curse, but and the and Sanders, the six coin tosses, which Drudge is is implying were actually determinative, probably were not determinative. Right, and and even if they were, those like the caucuses have some silly rules to them, and if Hillary Clinton is really good at calling heads or tails, like she's really good at calling heads or tails, like I don't know what to. I don't know what you do with that. Those are, those are the rules everyone agreed to play by, and some of these caucus rules are silly, because as we stated, it's not an election. Yeah. I think on the Republican side, look, if, if I'm waking up this morning, I really like myself and on Marco Rubio, because you're going to have Ted Cruz and Donald Trump vying for the crazy vote, and you have Marco Rubio kind of sitting in the catbird seat saying, I'm the establishment guy now. Like, Jeb Bush doesn't have the case uh, to make. Right? There's nobody else who can make that case anymore that they are the establishment candidate. Uh, Marco Rubio is that candidate now. And it's, you know, can he overcome both Trump and Cruz is the, is the question. Will they coalesce around a candidate? Yeah. Um, the most embarrassing moment goes to Ben Carson and his whole clothing thing. I don't know if you heard about that. No. Yet. No. Uh, ben Carson said uh, he, he like disappeared from the state yesterday. Ted Cruz's people were like spreading rumors that he was dropping out actively and his campaign issued a release that he didn't he did not dropping out he had to go back to Florida p- to pick up some clothing which, <laughs> you're which, kidding uh, no the, the campaign actually released a, an official statement on this to oh, which that's I, I asked does he not know that the postal service exists and does he not know that you can like hotels are more than happy to do your dry cleaning for you and has nobody ever told him about clothing money. stores <laughs> yeah you can go to TJ Maxx there are right. lots of when I, when I was traveling with John Kerry for six weeks at one point on the road with a bag the size of a backpack, I, I made a lot of visits to TJ Maxx. Yeah, exactly. Been there, done that. Not that specifically, but yeah, I know exactly. You know, on the road and suddenly you need a shirt. It's not that hard tuck, to get, right? Tuck the underwear, buy some new ones. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, in all probability... It, it, the, the one name that you haven't mentioned that it seems to me the is, is really the largest and most tragic uh, tragic is not from my point of view but the largest failure is Jeb Bush right well I mean he, he knew he was going to be a failure he wasn't in the state yesterday like he's yeah. taking this to New Hampshire I don't see I see this as a Giuliani problem where you you abandon those first states and you're like I'll pick it up later but and there's no later real momentum behind the campaign to begin with yeah I, I, I'm with you. All right, we're out of time. Uh, hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Ari Ravenhoff, host of the uh, Mor- uh, Morning Agenda on Sirius XM Progress Channel 127, author of the Benghazi Hoax, morningagenda.com. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Tom. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.